Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Tools and Tips to Owning Your Word. Emotional detachment is today's topic. Emotional detachment. Hmm. Um, before I start talking about that, I would like to thank my subscribers. Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much for going on this journey with me. You're all the best. Just so much love. Sending so much love and gratitude. And if you're new, welcome. I hope that today's topic resonates with you and you stick around. Maybe like the episode. Maybe subscribe. I can, please keep the comments coming. I love them. They're amazing. And I love our little online community. It's wonderful. Today we're going to talk about emotional detachment. This tool has come to the forefront because it keeps walking through my office door. <laughs> I've been having conversations over and over and over again with people about um, setting boundaries. And before you even get to the point where you set boundaries, it is important to start to understand emotional detachment, which is not a swear word, although if you struggle with codependency, you might think it is. So um, the tool around it is such. When we are over invested in someone, okay, or we have convinced ourselves that, that we are responsible for their emotions, Okay, we tend to become enmeshed or way too blended in with their life and what happens in their life and their emotional balance and imbalances. Okay, and it's extremely hard to recognize in ourselves when we're in those positions unless there's a big blow up or something really terrible happens. If there's an argument or um, the person that you're overly invested in like really has something bad happen and suddenly you're like oh my goodness like their choices aren't improving and I just keep enabling them and that's why their choices aren't improving like if you can get there kudos because that's huge because most people that are struggling with um, emotional enmeshment don't realize it so I, tool number one, when you're starting to recognize this and deal with this, and maybe this is the first time you've heard about it as you watch this episode, find a trusted person, a trusted confidant, and start asking the questions. Do you think that I am, you know, codependent in this relationship? If you don't um, understand or subscribe to the idea of codependency, then maybe you ask it this way. Do you think that I am overly invested in this person's um, well-being? And if you can ask yourself that, or this trusted person can, can answer for you, and the answer is yes, then it's time to start figuring out some emotional detachment. So what I like to do is in my head when someone is really upset or spewing their garbage or crying or having a moment, I am in my head saying to myself, I am simply holding space for this person. You show up better as a friend, as a parent, as a sibling, as a coworker, if you are not embroiled in the emotion that is being shown, okay? It is so much healthier for not only you, but for the person in, in that emotional roller co coaster um, to have that disconnect. Why? Because if I am simply holding space for this person to have this emotional outburst, there is most likely at the end of it going to be some sort of recognition, resolution, light bulb moment, or closure. But if I just take it all, if I just let them cry and scream and do their thing and live wherever they're living and not help them by just disconnecting, if I take all that emotion on, then they've just doubled their efforts. They have not learned anything. They have not healed anything. And they now have learned, unfortunately, that 
they have somebody to dump on. So then they're going to amplify that because now that it's not only their responsibility, um, or it's not their responsibility, they've now deemed it your responsibility because you've let them. Okay, that's why emotional detachment is so vital. It's so, so, so vital. If you're telling yourself, I am simply holding space for this person, it keeps you from getting overly invested. We should not be in any capacity more invested in somebody's health and well being than they are. I mean, we can choose to do it, sure, but then to the detriment of both parties. If we can stay within our bodies, stay within our emotional framework, understand that we don't own any of this, this person owns it, it's their experience, and I am simply here to hold a safe place for them to have their experience, changes everything. So much healthier, so much healthier. And when you walk away from the experience, here's another tool, or it's kind of a tip that goes with the tools. Like if you walk away from an experience where somebody was extremely emotional and you can't let it go, it means you weren't fully just holding space. It means that you were over investing. Okay. You were, you were feeding off of that emotion. You were in that emotion or you were taking that emotion on. Again, this isn't to judge and shame you, but if you can't let it go, then I would encourage you to do some work around that and let it go. It's not yours. At the end of the day, when somebody has an emotional outburst, anguish, sadness, grief, frustration, anger, whatever it is, it's theirs. It's not ours. And so when we walk away from those experiences, hopefully we feel like we've done a good job of framing up where our boundaries are so that this person had their experience and they finished it. And it, they either finished it because they stopped crying or they found resolution or they thanked us for simply listening to them um, or they made some sort of a plan to go forward. But that is the key and, and for all of us. You know, emotional detachment doesn't mean you're being aloof. It doesn't mean you're not being present. It simply means that you're being overly present because you're staying in your body. You're staying present to you, not only to them. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I really appreciate you watching this episode. If you do have additional questions or you'd like um, additional conversation about it, please feel free to add comments or email me. I've got my email listed below. And until next time, namaste.